Okay, can you can you guys actually hear me? Can you please write down in the chat just shortly if you can hear me? Yes, that's great. I just wait a few more seconds because people are just now coming in and yeah, it looks good. Um, okay. First of all, thank you for participating in this talk. Uh, it's um, sometimes I'm a little bit uh, nervous and then I'm getting very fast and talking. If that occurs, please just write down in the chat, Jan, come on, calm down. Then I will come down and then um, be, uh, get a little bit slower and maybe also switch back a few slides or something. And otherwise, let's get started. Just sharing you my screen. So you should see the presentation right now. Is that correct? Can anyone just please confirm? Cool, great. Okay, so you're all here today because of the topic for using a custom media authorization authentication server. And it's uh, the short version of how to authenticate with one user across many media apps using a custom OAuth 2 server. And before we go into that, just a little bit about me. Um, my name is Jan Küster. I'm living in Germany and uh, I'm working at the University of Bremen in the northern part of Germany as a software engineer into research projects. So researchers doing research, I'm doing the software and trying to participate a bit in research too, uh, if there is some time left. Um, I started with Meteor in 2015, 2016, so in the, somewhere around there. And um, yeah, there's my email uh, for contacting me. So feel free to contact me on any issue on Meteor or on research, whatever. Um, the whole topic is structured in a short introduction. I try to make it beginner friendly, but also it will be advanced uh, and at some point. So this is why uh, there will be a short introduction also into the account system. And um, then, of course, talking about how to uh, how to set up a custom OAuth server. And we have a hands-on example. So guys and girls, get your consoles ready and uh, um, uh, be prepared in the, se in, in, in the second half of this uh, talk. There will be a short example where you can actually try this out. It's really, really small. It's a really small example, but it should be um, for everyone um, uh, easy to to follow up. Um, and of course, an outlook at the end. Um, OK, so first of all, um, for, for all of you to know what this whole thing is about, to, to, to check again, is this something for me? We have some use case here. We will, the whole talk will be about, and that is we have one user and we have many apps and we want to authenticate for many apps and uh, without any complex dependencies coupling or, or things like this. Um, so should look something like this. People know sometimes it's like service-oriented architecture or microservices. You have heard the terms, um, maybe. And um, of course, these services, if they are not really totally stateless, you will need some kind of authentication or authorization at some point. Um, the talk, talk format is, uh, is very conceptual. There will be code examples and the hands-on, um, but I think the, the, the biggest part is conceptual and um, the, the, the repository um, at the end will be, um, sorry, the repository at the end will contain some explanations on that and further resources. Um, there is a little bit prior knowledge required, at least some fundamental knowledge. So if you're really a total beginner, um, there might be a point where you, you're maybe out of the loop. Um, but 
I encourage everyone to stay at the end. It's, uh, um, I hope this will be understandable for everyone. Um, and of course, the examples are linked at the end so, and the resources if you want to actually use the resources here, feel free to go, it's everything open and uh, I encourage everyone to leave issues, contribute and so on. And so now we really go into this whole thing, what this is about. And I first want to start with Meteor's account system because for me, Meteor's account system was the one of the biggest selling points at the time I was entering this um, because I was struggling so hard before with this whole authentication thing. And Meteor's account system is just awesome. Okay, so this, this is always what I told also other people that it's really like zero configuration and you have a full working password authentication out of the box. I mean, how great is that? And um, it turned out to be um, no, without any hidden <laughs> hassles or something, as you might know, sometimes there are great things. And then after a certain time you realize, oh, okay, it's not that easy as I thought, but it is actually, and it's really working great. It's even having the whole bcrypt uh, password encryption included. So um, we had uh, project partners were very worried at some time because of uh, plain text, passwords, phishing, and have I be pawned. And that was some uh, uh, at a, at a time very very problematic when this wasn't news, especially to people who are not really into software development. And I could really <laughs> uh, with with confidence telling them like, yeah, we have encryption out of the box and it's it's working great. Um, there's also super easy setup locking with external services, which is an important part of our presentation later on. Um, just for now, this is so great to integrate these big players out of the box, Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, GitHub, getting people right, right on to your platform without any uh, extra login. And um, this is some kind of uh, setup there when you use an external service. So you, you have your client not authenticate directly to your application, but use this external service and, and grant access usually to the service. But in the end, we, we, we just use it for authentication. And that's just great. Um, saving you one password because you don't need to add an extra password. You just get an access token. Great feature like uh, 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 having some capability to log in and not just remembering some extra password. And this is all based on the OAuth 2 workflow. And OAuth 2 workflow is something you may have heard before or not. Um, it's a pretty solid and well-established standard in the web. And uh, many major platforms support it, either as consumer or as provider. And um, it's basically securing APIs with access tokens or resume tokens, depending on the use case. Um, so yeah, when we you, uh, log in with an external service, there is this OAuth 2 workflow that's actually implemented to grant us access. And now comes the big question because this is, uh, sorry, I just need to see the chat if everything's cool. Okay. Um, now comes the big question. What if, if we don't want to rely on the third party service? Look, if we want to log in with one user across many applications, we could just say, okay, we just use login with Twitter or login with Facebook and then it's fine. Then, then Twitter and Facebook are handling it for us. But there are two, two, two concerns raised. The one is not everyone has an account on these platforms and we don't want to force our users into any third party usually. And, and the second one is, of course, privacy uh, concerns um, that, um, uh, for example, in our projects, we have the, um, we have the rules that we can't just simply uh, include a, a third party player. 
like that. And so we came to the point to set up our own. And there's another problem coming up. The accounts password is monolithic by design. So the packages used for your login with a major applications are actually capable of implementing some kind of OAuth workflow, but it's it's getting really problematic if I would now want to use this one account to authenticate across applications and exchange the data without setting up a complex sync structure and everything that, that still, or, or sharing the database, like that, which are concepts that are um, associated with tight coupling and, and, and discouraged in the end. And this is like the typical setup. You have your major application, you have your clients authenticating there, um, but we want services. We want microservices to set up. We want um, them run them independently from each other. I mean, this is one of the big promises of the microservices that are just independent and, 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 and not coupled. And then you simply have your clients authenticate across them and, and let the user even don't know what they're doing, uh, that they are actually maybe using different services. And there is this remedy, which is simply set up our own service. And this is where the more um, focused part comes um, that we simply replace the external service with our media app. And that's something like this. So you say add accounts and then my service. And um, I will use one of our projects example service um, that we have set up, but you can actually simply either fork the package and just rename it to your namespace if this is really important um, or just leave it right there because besides the naming and some of the um, required fields, there's really nothing special about it. Um, so to make this all work, we use a custom authorization and authentication server. Um, you, it's, this is just a simple overview. So you authenticate to this server and your application and, and use your applications once the server has granted access. The applications and the server, they are not coupled, but they know each other. And um, I will, in a, in a few minutes, I will go into that, uh, how this actually works. Um, but this whole thing is about this authentication server implementing this OAuth 2 workflow. And I don't want to go further into OAuth because this, this would really take an own presentation format of itself. I'm just talking about this, how OAuth 2 works in detail and which workflows there are. And um, basically for those who are uh, familiar with OAuth, we will um, uh, use the um, access code grant workflow, which is um, I think the, 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 the complex, uh, but also the secure way, the securest way of doing things. Um, and of course, we want to base this authentication server on Meteor and accounts. So we want to have all these nice Meteor features out of the box. We don't want to introduce another technology right now here because then, then I would not talk on this conference about this. And uh, this, this is what we want. We want to have, manage our auth server based on Meteor, based on Meteor's account system and simply um, let other applications um, use this auth server, or consume it. And there is one package and maybe I just talk a little bit about right now because it, it seems a little bit like advertisement here. <laughs> um, actually, our project uh, had this use case as well that we have very, very granular uh, uh, service oriented architecture. And then we had to implement this our own. And I was of course, before searching for ex existing packages. And I actually found a package and uh, I cloned it and uh, improved it because it was a little bit outdated. And right now this package contains the full uh, node of two server in its latest version. So it was before in an, an outdated version and um, I'm uh, actively maintaining it to keep it alive. It has deep meteor integration. So it runs really out of the box. There is no need to, 
add some further media integration or uh, run any bind environment things on your uh, web app routes or something. And it's wrapped in an easy API. And I added tests because when I found the package, it was not tested at all. And I don't like to change things that are not tested because then I don't know if it has a, any good or bad effect. And yeah, that that's it pretty much how, uh, what the features of this packages are about, but it's, it's completely taking away all the trouble of implementing the OAuth workflow. So that's, that's a, a, um, actually a, a big burden that has been abstracted away by this package. And again, as I said, disclaimer, I wrote or improved this package. So if you find another one, that's totally fine. Um, I will just use this one for this presentation um, because I'm familiar with it. And if you take a look now again at our participants, then it's we simplify this to like having one application right now because it's just I don't want to fill up the 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 the, the graphics with many, many, many uh, applications. I think you get the concept. There is one of many applications that is actually um, the one serving our resources. In the OAuth 2 workflow, it's usually called resource server. I just call it application. It's, it's a little bit easier. And client is actually the user's browser, user agent or something that is accessing this application. Um, Creating this OAuth server, this is not the hands-on part. This is just me showing you how easy it is actually to set this up. So there is no much complexity in it. You simply create this app. Um, you add these two packages, install Bcrypt, putting the most important data in the settings. And then you simply run it with the settings file. And that's already it. Um, you will see that in the hands-on it's uh, and the reposit uh, example repository there. It's not that much code required to make this run. And here's the thing now. We want to have an implicate implic knowledge between application and OAuth server. So they must have something, some credentials to know each other because they are not tightly coupled. So, so they need to have some kind of handshake they have to do. Um, and this is in the OAuth workflow um, you, uh, uh, implemented using a client ID. So which app are you? Because the, o uh, the auth server has, I don't know, many apps registered and an auth server need to know like, which app are you? Are you, and this, I just called it calendar app. The app itself is doing actually nothing. I just use it as a example name. And then they're exchanging a secret, um, which is really just exchanged between the application and the auth server. So the client has no, uh, 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 has no access to the secret right now. Um, this is rather one part of the OAuth workflow, ensuring that the application and the auth server uh, know each other. And there is a redirect URI, which is uh, uh, used by the application to receive credentials from the auth server. So these are the most minimal credentials you um, actually uh, have to provide for the off server. Often you want to have a little bit more like title description and you can have more than one redirect URI. Mm. There's something like scope because OAuth is usually uh, for authorization. So it's about, you, you know this, um, you know these uh, prompts when you're, for example, on GitHub, do you want to grant application X, Y, Z, the following uh, rights? And then it's listing like, it has access to my email, to my contacts and everything. This is usually the scope. And um, we will skip that here um, simply because this is only about authentication. Um, when we look at the, sorry, when you see that, when we bring this into the code, then it's really simple Simple as that. Um, in your server uh, main file, you simply import this OAuth2 server, um, uh, add pass some credentials um, from your settings file to the OAuth server instance, and then register some clients. So it's 
really like that. Um, you can, as I say, take a look later on in the hands-on example code. Um, it's not, not that much to do. It's more important that the credentials are correct. This is usually, most of the times, this is where errors happen when credentials were not entered correctly. And there's one more thing. There's one route. This is something special here because the OAuth server itself is um, is not by default passing something data somewhere. So we have to set up some kind of authenticated route. And this is an abstraction. So it allows you to add a route to the web app, to the media web app, um, but this route is secured in a way that it won't be called until the other routes before in the stack have not been passed uh, successfully. And in order to pass them, the whole OAuth server workflow, uh, the OAuth workflow um, has to pass at least the authentication phase. And uh, I'm not 100% sure right now if the authorization phase, phase has also need to pass, but I think so too. Um, however, this is this route is set up for your application to retrieve the user data after um, the user has been authenticated because OAuth itself is really just um, ex uh, obtaining access tokens and uh, resume tokens and OAuth itself doesn't know anything about your user states and so you write this uh, you add this route simply to get the user, get the data you want to send to the client, uh, to the application, put them into the body and then write it to the, to the HTML body. Um, this is the part of the authentication server backend. So now we simply create one application and the application also needs to have some handler um, to make this request starting. And this is basically wrapped in this accounts minus and Leah, this is the name of our project. Um, this is the same as you know with accounts Twitter. It's abstracting away for you this whole uh, uh, burden of preparing the call, adding the right parameters that are required, uh, uh, putting them into adding a state to, to prevent CSRF attacks and all that stuff. Um, this is all abstracted away for you in the accounts package. And there is the service configuration because your application also needs to have the service configuration ready to um, send this data to the client in, in this time, not the client uh, uh, in this uh, um, in this overview, but the media client bundle is usually subscribing to service configuration in order to prepare the correct um, the correct uh, get request to the auth server for the login. Note that the secret will not be used there for this request, but later on um, in the exchange for the uh, access token. And this would look like this. So you simply again import the settings file and then you have your service configuration absurded. So this this is it. I think some people who use uh, a login with Twitter, login with Facebook or something before have seen this uh, before. This is very similar to that. And then you can use this data to make your app, uh, to, to have your apps uh, and the OAuth server making a handshake. And just up to this point, if this is too fast for someone or not understandable, um, please leave a comment in the chat. Otherwise I will just continue. And mm, because now we're at the point that the servers know each other, but we also need some uh, capabilities for the users to actually authenticate. So we need some client code. We need a login in the OR, on the OAuth server um, to have the authentication run and 
the authorization also. Um, the authorization is something um, you can, if you want, abstract it away in, 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 in terms of uh, having some handler and automate it, like automatically send the authorization form. Um, if you're doing public things with pu securing public APIs and uh, uh, you want to have a real authorization framework there, then of course you don't want to have this step uh, automated, but let the user actually decide. Um, if it's really just for logging in, you can automate it. In the examples, I have not automated because it's important for you to see what parameters are used there and uh, simply for educational purposes. Um, first part, we have some authentication step and then we have simply a login template. Very simple, just a login form. Let the user enter um, email and password submit this and on the authentication server itself this data is simply submitted using login with passwords so yay everything runs out of the box set up within some minutes and the user is logged in when the user is logged in we have the authorization phase and in this authorization phase now it's getting a little bit interesting uh, uh, regarding the parameters we have another form, the authorization phase, and this one is actually um, uh, running on uh, uh, sending this data then to the um, to an abstracted. <clears throat> sorry, it's sending the data to a route on the that the OAuth server has created. <clears throat> that is actually using these credentials the meteor token, the allow level, if you deny or if you allow the access, the client ID, a redirect URI and the state. And the state, as I said, this is a generated, um, <clears throat> is a generated bunch of data that is uh, sent in order to prevent CSRF attacks. And, and uh, these are actually sent to the server and um, the token itself this is the cool thing. We don't need our OAuth server to generate this token. So the authentication token is already there. This is the token we get when we log in with Meteor's uh, account password. So one step abstracted away for us. And the others are, I show you in a minute, these are actually part of the get request. So when you take a look at the authorization template, it's really simple. There's just some um, you need to subscribe to uh, authorize all clients. This is just checking for the client IDs. This is not really secure in a way that, that, that it prevents any things, but you can already abort uh, uh, requests at this point if the client ID simply mismatches. <clears throat> and um, then you simply use the, uh, par the cure the search parameters from the uh, URL address and uh, you simply um, parse them and send them to the form. And of course, use the media login token that is placed in your local storage. Um, <clears throat> I have checked, I think there is an accounts methods that even abstracts away this local storage access. Um, so um, you don't even need to implement that by hand. And <clears throat> Yeah, this is how such a query uh, looks like. Um, and as you can see, so this is the one you start from your application by using this accounts minus Leah or accounts minus your service name. Um, this is the build request, the get request. <clears throat> and as you can see, these are the important parameters here uh, that are sent to this authorization form. And yeah. The workflow initialization is using this accounts minus Leah, and this is really, really just one line. It's media login with Leah, and all the rest is, uh, as I said, abstracted away for you. Um, and then <clears throat> when the response is, uh, has received, you simply can log your user, then you're authenticated. So this is, was a little bit about like the theoretical part, like how, this is all structured and uh, what happens there. And now we want, I am just preparing for you. Now we have some hands-on example and I will just send you um, 
a link. Um, I have to, just for you to know, um, I don't do the hands-on example live right now because maybe someone will pick up the slide and just want to go through step by step. So I have made some screenshots of it and um, we'll talk about it and always switch a little bit between the um, between the windows. So, oh, so yeah, clone this repository and I will send it into the chat right now. So if someone wants to work on that, it's um, time to clone it right now. Um, maybe if, if there is anyone who wants to clone it, maybe you give me just a short response in the chat. So I just know that we wait a few seconds until you guys ready. Okay, cool. Um, in this repository, there are two folders actually inside. Um, the one folder is the off server folder and the other one is the calendar app folder, whatever. <laughs> um, you simply go into this folder, run your meteor npm install and then you run meteor npm run off server. This is um, also in the package JSON. You can find it as simply a run script that contains a call to the uh, uh, a build call. So you need, don't need to type that much. Okay, and if you're running this, it, sometimes it takes a little bit, um, then it should look like this. Um, with, for this example, I've just, added some example users there. It's important that no errors are there and that um, the OAuth2 server says, we have a registered client, our calendar app. And yeah, and then there's our example user. I will give you the, the login with the super secure password. I know, I know that you know what the password will be um, in a minute and the app is running on localhost, but we don't want to access this app directly because the off, the off server is something that is running uh, secondarily. Primarily, we want to access our example app. And for this, you open a new terminal or a, a, a new terminal tab and um, simply do the same again. You go into the calendar app, run your meter npm install, and then run the calendar script, uh, yeah, media npm run calendar. And this should also set up and run your calendar app. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just checking if there is something coming up here in the chats or anything, but as it seems, everyone is satisfied so far and has no questions. Oh. Uh, oh, where is media? Got the password. What is it? Turned. Okay. Uh, hmm. Anyone knows something about the warehouse issues? Because I, I, don't really know if this is related to the app or something of uh, the um, atmosphere packages or something. <clears throat> okay, um, I would just go a little bit forward. Oh, okay, cool. Great, <laughs> great. Okay, um, so you simply, I, I just reduced the app to the total minimum. So when you're on your calendar app, um, because you're not logged in, um, you know this, if current user then, and if not, then do other things. And if we have no current user, then we want to display this login now button. And if you click this login now button, um, then, actually it will open a pop-up. And when you look at the pop-up, um, when you look at the pop-up, you see 
in the euro in, in in the address bar you see this constructed um url and uh, you see that there are all these um parameters there that are required for authentication request um, as a part of the workflow and you simply now enter your email and your password and tada of course the email is john doe at example.com and the password is password and um oh so you have a white uh, you have a pop-up as a white page um maybe do do you have maybe disabled your pop-up i can just try this now i uh, just to confirm if this is the same as me um so usually when you run this pop-up um yeah some uh, sometimes you have to grant access to the to this pop-up i think i did it some ages ago to localhost 1990 which is why i don't i haven't thought about that so um you can also hit your uh, server that's fine that's okay so if you hit now your john doe at example.com and you submit it then you should be logged in and see something like this and um so actually now i switched already to <laughs> to the live one um just to, to to show you this is just done to show you actually these parameters there to confirm again that this is all working and when you hit on authorize then it's locked in and your calendar app now has received the the user <coughs> document that has been um sent by this authenticated route i have uh, talked before so actually when you hit now this and you want to check in here and see the user document then you will see that um, i just have published the services which is not that good <laughs> practice but i just just did it right now this is actually the data you got um <clears throat> from the um from the uh, external server so here you have now your updated um user document and that's actually it so you can do that across i don't know how many apps you want to add and how many services you want to get where you want to authenticate um this is where um where the whole magic happens so um yeah that was it okay so just summarize um again there are very few lines of code to actually get this done and um you can do if you want to have a service oriented architecture and you want to run many apps uh you can actually uh, integrate this with a few lines of codes of course there are some caveats you have to think about you will have to update the user profile on the off server because on on your authentication uh, on your login via the off server you will at some point you will synchronize the or override the user document so then of course you need to sync this with your off server um but um first of all you have now a valid OAuth workflow and you can write your OAuth server in a way that you can access it like, okay, we have an admin and this admin, this person can add new applications that are using, that are registered client. You provide a form, say like, okay, this is the client ID, this is the secret, you know it from people who did that before at um, with, with other services might know that. So you enter these credentials and then you can simply do that even with applications beyond Meteor, because it's an it's an O of two workflow. It's really um, only running over HTTPS, so there's no DDP itself involved until the point, um, no, even not at the point of getting the user document. So everything uh, is running on HTTP, and um, you can therefore use it uh, even for other purposes than just authenticating your Meteor apps. Um, of course, uh, just one thing, of course, then you have to have your, if you use other uh, uh, applications, then you have to implement the whole client logic uh, uh, on your own because you then have to make the correct 
requests format you need to make you need to create a state yourself and all that stuff so this is of course um uh, uh some some effort but it's possible um you can scale and uh, I, I know from an earlier talk today, scaling is still a big issue in the media community. And um, I think uh, splitting into services, I mean, it's, it, it's debatable how far this can go, but um, it makes, in some use cases, it makes totally sense to scale. And uh, when you have an account server <clears throat> uh, managing this, then you can scale as much as you want, depending on your whole infrastructure setup. Um, of course, you have to manage. So it, it solves one problem, but it also introduces other problems. You have to update the user docs at the odd server. You have to make sure that the data integrity is right. So <clears throat> it will have, of course, follow up efforts. And of course, um, oh, there's one slide missing. Uh, one of the most important ones, oh my God. Um, of course, there's security implications. So when you have you have 100 apps, but you only have one authentication server, then of course, this one authentication server is a nice target. And so you have to, of course, make additional measures for securing your account data. And um, so don't forget that. Um, this is all, these topics are all that big that they would fit in one talk on their own. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've added some resources on learning OAuth, uh, especially the RFCs and um, OAuth.com is a very nice page of explaining all that by example. And there's also part in the media guide on OAuth, which you should definitely read on. Um, and um, I've added the uh, links to the used packages in case you want to use them uh, uh, as well. Um, there's also, we have also one package that adds this workflow to login with DDP. So um, if this is one use case for you as well, that a server acts as a, as a user agent client or something, then you need this login with DDP and uh, this needs to be wrapped for the OAuth workflow as well. So if you uh, want to use the resources, feel free to go, leave any issues. I would be very appreciated if you find any issues, especially when it comes to security. Um, we're trying our best, but we also have limited resources. <laughs> and um, thank you for your attention. Um, I'm definitely open to any discussion or debate, uh, uh, questions, anything, uh, let me know. Okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, I stumbled uh, uh, over this use cases uh, first by accident, and I couldn't implement it. And um, then I just dropped it. And 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 then when our research project uh, actually demanded it, then I had to actually really implement it. And that, it was a hard thing, but it's working now. <laughs> oh yeah, danke schön. <laughs> okay, yeah, gerne. Um, thank you all for being here. And um, I just leave this chat open for a few minutes and um, yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah.